Hey y'all, happy Friday, happy Friday. Who this week went by? How y'all doing today? I'm coming to give my six month uh, VSG update. I told y'all I would give it after I went to the doctor and I had my six month checkup on the 9th. I can't believe six months has went by so quickly. I can tell y'all some of the things. Um, I have lost a total of 54 pounds. Um, they had an office. I started at 337. And um, I weigh 282.3 now. 282.3. So, um, which will put me at 55 pounds. But I'm saying I've lost 54 <laughs> I'm just going by myself. But anyway, I'd rather be on the more cautious side than not. Uh, but my doctor's office was extremely pleased with me as far as my um, weight is concerned. It's, it's coming down. And y'all have to keep in mind that um, I'm on a different situation. That's why I always tell you, I am no expert. Don't judge by my surgery. It's, this is an individual thing. You're going to lose weight as you're going to lose it. You may lose more than me. You may lose less than me, but it's all on your body type, what you weigh, what your dietary needs are, and how you have to eat. Or if you can exercise, which you all know that I can do very minimal, you know, with my knee situation going on. So, like I said, my doctor was extremely pleased. She said most of the time they look for people to be wherever you were at six weeks to be doubled. And I didn't realize that. To be doubled that amount when you come back for your six months, I was exactly doubled that amount, y'all. And yeah, as y'all know, I had my own goal of wanting to lose 60. That didn't happen. But I'm very happy with what has happened. Um, she did told, tell me, I told I thought I was at kind of a stall. I don't know that if I'm getting enough calories or not. So to kind of play around with my calories, which I've been doing the last week, I think I picked up the wrong calories. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to go get something. Um, I'm going to show y'all. Um, I don't know if y'all know what I ate yesterday. But I'm just going to tell y'all. Um, the kind of, like I said, I pick up the wrong calories. I want to uh, let y'all know. I don't necessarily want to say they're wrong because I do eat this stuff. But for example, if y'all watched my video yesterday, I had a wasa cracker. I had two pieces of deli turkey. I had a laughing cow cheese wedge and I had some cucumbers. 35. That was 135 calories. That was a nice snack. And it and it included some protein. I'm not saying that these other snacks that I'm gonna mention, but they don't include protein. And that's my problem that myself, because I don't like the protein shakes. And anyway, my dietitian wants you not to be on that artificial stuff as much as possible, as less as possible. Use it only to supplement. They want you to get your uh, nutrients in from your diet if you can, plus your, your vitamins that you take every day. So on the days when I know I'm not doing well on protein, those are not good days to be eating things like fruit snacks. Like if I get a little pack of fruit snacks, normally I'm going to eat two. Two is 120 calories versus what I would have had yesterday, and that's 10 grams of protein for that snack versus having no protein for just about similar calories. You see what I'm saying? So it's like when you choose the wrong calories, and that's not to say because I still eat the fruit snacks, but I have the fruit snacks on days that maybe I'm doing well on protein. Those are the days I should eat the fruit snacks, or get a pack of fruit snacks for my snack. Instead of instead of the days that I know I'm not doing well, and yesterday I didn't do well on protein. I had a chicken wing, then I ate that snack, and then I had a little bowl of cereal for dinner. So I did not get my protein in yesterday. I didn't add any protein, which I should have at least added some protein powder. So she talked to me in depth about that, or I should have yesterday probably drank a protein shake. But I didn't. You know, and I have things like the 100-calorie nuts, but they have very minimal protein in it. But if I'm going to use a snack on the days that I don't have the protein, I should probably have picked the nuts over the fruit snacks. You see what I'm saying? So I was going to show y'all, but I'm not in the kitchen. And so um, that was one of the conversations that we had to make sure that I'm getting at least 60 grams of protein in a day. And I'll be honest with y'all, most days I can, 
but a lot of days I don't because I try to eat things that's higher in protein like salmon, uh, tuna packets. Uh, I try to eat some meat, but uh, I do because of the diverticulitis have to focus on getting vegetables down too. So this week has been the first week since I've had a visit with her that I hadn't really eaten the vegetables like I should have. And I feel the difference in my body. So I got to go, like I said, I don't know if y'all watched the video yesterday. Some of y'all are not here for that. I um have to really kind of get myself back because I feel like I feel off. So, um, and it's important that I stay regular and stay with the fiber and stuff and go. So if vegetables are a key to me doing that. So I just kind of wanted to touch on that. And like I said, please talk to your <laughs> dietitian and stay in touch with your surgeon. And because they, you can call them anytime you want to, I try to kind of go back and not call as much. So over the past two months, I hadn't called. She did give me some arm exercises that I can do in addition to my PT that I'm doing right now. So I am going to incorporate some of those to kind of help me build up my strength. And I do some, but it wasn't the ones that she, you know, suggested with the little weights. And I do have weights here, so that's been a blessing. But we talked over my supplements. And I was telling her the ones I couldn't stand. Like I said, all my test results came back. Except, great, except for... My iron, which like, again, I was anemic prior to the surgery. I was anemic prior to the surgery, so it wasn't like that's going away. But my doctor has put me back on, you know, iron at least three days a week. At least three. You know, she said she might have to put me back on every day, but right now we're going to do three and see if we can build it up that way. To keep on still eating the healthy things. Now, the one thing that didn't came back late after my surgery, after my labs and stuff went through... The vitamin B12 came back late, y'all, and it was high. And my doctor, my primary care the previous Friday, told me she wanted me to stay on this. And it's called Nascobol. Nascobol. And it is a, I'll show y'all. It's a spray vitamin B12. Now, I took vitamin B12 prior to um, me having the surgery. So, me doing vitamin B12 is nothing new. I took it for energy boost. However, because my um, I talked to my doctor, right? And we talked about the supplements I was taking. And I, chewed the, I have some bariatric pals, ones that I gave away, because I really didn't like those. So I went back to taking the children's equators, which my doctor's office recommend. Now, I don't know what your doctor's office recommend, but they recommend taking two of these a day. So I take these, but sometimes I just get tired of the chewables. So I was glad to get these from Very Accurate Pal as one of, you know, I told y'all they sent me some stuff to um, sample for them and recommend or if I liked it or if I don't like it. Well, these are the size of the capsules, y'all. These are the size of the capsules. And I want to tell y'all, these are so easy to swallow. Well, come to find out, y'all, the reason why my B12 is high, I had started taking these. My dietitian said, that's fine. I was telling her everything I was taking, and that's important that you tell them what you're taking, how you switched up your supplements, because they want to make sure you're getting the right supplements in. But the reason why my B12 was high because I was doing the nasal and the multivitamin. Well, come to find out, if you take this particular one from Bariatric Pal, you need to stop taking the B12 because this has all the B12 you need in it. The reason why my doctor wanted me still on this because, you know, after surgery, your body may not can absorb it. And that's why they do the nasal spray. Well, my body apparently is absorbing just fine, and I think it's because I also eat the vegetables and stuff as well. You know, that's been a focus of mine. Okay. Then we get to the calcium. I'm thinking these right here are the petites. Y'all gonna say those don't look like no petites. But they are really easy to swallow. I wish I could show y'all some of the regular ones. Now, I do have the chewable, and I do the chewable sometime too. But these are the petites. And the directions on the bottle, you have to take your calcium twice a day. Your, your calcium, if you do the chewables, or if you do these, you take it twice a day. Well, the directions on the bottle says 
two capsules a day. And my dietitian has all this stuff in her office, and she happened to have the same brand. She said, if you're taking the petites, you must take these three times a day. But my calcium levels were fine, although it was on the lower spectrum, that my calcium levels were fine. So even though I wasn't taking the appropriate dosage, and I told her sometimes I could take the pills fine in the morning, and I don't, you know, be able to take them in the afternoon. So she um, told me I need to take these three, three a day, three, two times a day, instead of what the bottle says to make sure I'm getting enough calcium. But I told her when I can't take them more, twice a day, when I just get to that feeling where I can't swallow any more pills, these, again, are from Bariatric Pal, which I would highly recommend. I, You take three of these chews a day, but sometimes I have a difficult time. I'll do twice, and I don't remember the third one. But these help when I do take the pills. I'll just chew one of these at night before bed. If I said, don't want it, I don't really want to swallow any more pills for the day, I can chew one of these. Now, I do take other supplements that has nothing to do with the surgery, like zinc and magnesium and vitamin C. You know, I do add that into my regimen, but that's just my own personal regimen. Sometimes I take turmeric and sometimes I take the apple cider vinegar uh, gummies. But yeah, so this. Now my situation, y'all, is I, I thought it was just me, but I'm in a Facebook group and I itch, my upper arms itch. I don't know if y'all can see them, how spotted up they are. And they were itching real bad. This one is not as bad. But my upper arms and my upper thighs, I started itching after surgery. Now, I'm a firm believer. I, I, I use a Eucerin lotion. Um, and I don't know if y'all noticed before, but sometimes my hand has a situation with the eczema, you know, on it. But I use the Eucerin lotion for that. And But this was like, I would itch and I would do pretty good in the daytime with Vaseline and stuff like that. But at night... I would wake up and it would be, you know, blood on my sheets because I'd been scratching over in the night, I guess. And so I had to, I, somebody was talking about it and this guy recommended this Destin. Now, I don't know if it works for anybody else, but since I've been using this, I put it on my arms right before I go to bed and up my upper thighs and it helps. Destin is not the, it's, you know, it's um, white. And it spreads on white. I don't know if you've ever had a child, but I used this on my daughter. But I also used a clear one. I think it was the a and I'm not remember sure. But I don't know if another one will work. But this has worked for me as far as the itching is concerned at night. And it stopped me from doing all that darn scratching. So uh, I just wanted to kind of say this. Now, <clears throat> what I like I said, the protein, make sure you get your protein in. Because I think that's what I'm going to have to get back to, making sure that I get the 60 grams in every day. And I've been a little laxed <clears throat> on that. And like I said, I don't do the supplements. I, I had, well, she told me to continue to use like the Genie Pro powder, you know, to put in food to kind of help boost my supplement, you know, my protein on the days that I am falling short. So I will tell y'all to make sure you concentrate, still get your protein in, get as much water and fluids as you can in. You know, she's still on me about that, even though she said, you're doing good. I get at least three bottles in a day, but I still need to up it. They still want to see me at 60 ounces, you know, and I don't go back again in six months. But of course, you can go to the dietitian anytime. That you, you know, you kind of falling short or you feel like you need some kind of a pick-me-up or a boost or some reinforcements, um, I would say. But, um, like I said, uh, if you, you know, want to have the surgery, you know, really pray about it and make sure you go into it with an open mind. Do your research. Again, I had the gastric sleeve surgery. Uh, I didn't have the bypass. And I think you have to go through some of the same things with the bypass. Um, you know, um... I don't know the difference in them. I know some people who have had it, but, and they seem to have issues with eating a lot. And that's what we talked about too, y'all. What is so funny is I um was telling her, I said, you know, some days I can eat. I don't have a problem with eating. And you would think that I would eat a lot, but it's still like the equivalent of what one meal would be for the entire day. You know, and I may have a snack. So <laughs> it's so funny. It's drastically different than prior to the surgery. But some days I tell her I can eat two chicken wings with no problem. And one day I have, uh, uh, or the next day I may have a problem getting one down. You know, I'm full before it can even hit my mouth good. Two or three bites, I'm full. And uh, I, men probably won't have this same problem. And women that are not going through this situation right now, I still have a cycle. And so 
it's been this way since I can remember since I've had a cycle. One day I'm extremely ill as far as anything that it looks like food. I don't want it. I feel sick. I don't feel like eating. And another day during that time of the month, I am ravenous and I can eat up everything. And now, and I still see that I'm still like that. Now, everything meaning I can eat a lot more that day, but it's still nowhere near what probably a person would consider a lot of food. But it's a lot. It's a lot more than what I would consider, you know, I eat on a normal day. So I can tell the difference that my appetite is a lot higher that day. And I'm eating a lot of junk food, you know. I have a craving for, I'm not a real sweet eater. And that's what's been worrying me lately. Because here lately, this last couple of weeks, I have been really on a sweet kick. And so I don't know where that's even coming from, you know, that I've been wanting the sweet. So I make sure I try to eat the, the sugar-free, you know. And too much of that's not good for you either. I try to eat the sugar-free whenever possible so as not to gain, you know, uh, you know, be eating back and becoming sugar dependent again. But anyway, that's where I'm at for the six months. Um, like I told y'all, if you can do it natural, do it natural. I don't regret it. I think it's a tool that's here to help me. And I pray that I can continue to lose some more weight to get down to where I need to be, you know, as far as my surgery is concerned. But it's just a one day at a time. Like I said, I'm kind of like on a slow roll this month. And I've lost three whole pounds, but... I'm just going to kind of just stick with it and stay with it. You can't, you know, I'm losing at a steady pace, which I'm happy. And I pray that means that I will keep it off for a long length of time. But at any rate, I wanted to kind of just check in and let y'all know where I'm at. But I thank y'all for your support. I thank you for your encouragement words. And, you know, if you want to talk privately about it and want some information, I can give you what I know. But I would encourage you to please do your research. Please talk to your dent doctor. Talk to your dietitian. Not only talk to your surgeon and your dietitian. I think it's important. As y'all know, I go to the doctor regularly, you know, um, at least once a quarter, sometimes, most of the time, more, more than that. But um, just to keep a check on my health. You know, the things that I was going through, I have my A1C, my blood work, my labs done every quarter just to see where I'm at. And so I think that's important that you have a good relationship with your primary care doctor. So, you know, sometimes they can see things that kind of you can tell your surgeon and things of that nature. So it's important that, you know, you get yourself checked out regularly. And I wish you the best. Like I said, if you want to talk about this. In private or whatever, please just feel free to email me and I will surely answer the questions that I can. But remember, your journey is your journey. Don't compare yourself to others. And I, I talked about this. I said sometimes it's hard when you see a person doing well and then you see another person <clears throat> not. I'm going to tell y'all this story. is so funny. When I was in the doctor's office, I'm going to tell you how God will deal with you. Because I still, like I said, I had a goal in my head for 60 pounds. And this lady was in there. She came in there. She had came from the dietitian's office and she was setting her annual appointment. She came back over to the doctor's office and said her annual appointment. She said, don't I know you? I didn't know that lady. She may have known me, but I didn't know her. And so she asked me where I worked and I told her. And so she started talking to me about the surgery. And she said her and uh, a family member had had the surgery. And I asked her how long it had been. And she said, three years. Now, she was a nice size lady. So, she went on to tell me how much she weighed. She said, I weighed 159. And so, I said, well, how much weight have you lost? She said, 50 pounds. And the funny thing about it, of course, she started at 209. And she said, I've kept it off for three years. And it just smiled because I tell you, God will always, and I, I know y'all probably say, you always mention God because God is so good, y'all. God will always send a ram in the bush to let you know you all right. I'm with you. And you know, even when you have self-doubt, God was like, I'm like, this lady said, it's been three years since that was her goal. And she is 159 and she is sustained 159. But you sitting up here beating yourself up. And this is what she lost, 50 pounds. So even though she started out smaller, you just thank God for where you are. You're not where you were. You lost some weight. You be happy. Be content. 
and you're okay. You're doing all right. And that just kind of, I don't know if she knew this, but she was so joyful and so pleasant to talk to until it just kind of like, maybe that even before I got to my surgeon and talked to her, uh, talked to the uh, nurse practitioner, and before I talked to the dietitian, that just kind of gave me some reassurance about my journey. And it just was a blessing to have that conversation with her uh, that day, that morning in the office. And I tell you, it's so funny because God will always send a ram in the bush. And even the one that checked me in, I don't know what you call the person. I guess it's the uh, medical assistant that weighed me. And she was talking about, you're doing good. You're doing great. She said, I remember when you came in. She said, I know you'd be glad when you can get rid of that cane. She said, but even you're walking a little bit better. So it was just a, a, a blessing to have that. And like I said, it's just amazing how God works, that he will always send an angel right here on earth. So with that said, y'all, I'm going to get off here. I just want to give you a six-month update. I want you to know you're loved. I love you, but God truly, truly loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. Love you. Bye.